I'd rather invest in someone or something that's going to be a secure, consistent investment. I don't have to worry about that makes money while I sleep, that I don't have to do anything to manage. And my money's safe and backed by true hard assets, good operators. That's where capital is best placed, in my opinion. And of course, you always want to diversify over a number of investments, the higher risk, the higher reward. But this is how I consider investments. Number one, you know, how much work does it need? Number two, the security of it. Number three, the ROI. Right, just a consistent ROI, 10% or greater is what, what we're always looking for. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's Aaron Fragnito, your host of the Passive Cashflow Podcast. I'm, I'm back with another episode today. We're going to talk about Passive Investing Explained. Now, if you follow us, Passive Investing is quite a common topic, but a lot of people I still talk with all the time are very confused as to exactly what Passive Investing is. There's a lot of different people that describe Passive Investing as owning real estate that is rented out, even if you're in charge of managing it, and tons of other passive investments that I do not believe are truly passive. So we're going to talk about today what is true passive wealth, how to build from working uh, for your money to working for you, to your money working for you, okay? So, and I put in there specifically how to build from working for your money to your money working for you because there's a process, there's a building that goes on, there's the creation of a, a lifestyle change and the creation of passive wealth that people consciously make to create passive income. Also, what are the three most important considerations when investing and how to be patient with investments? So we're going to talk about those topics today. We're going to talk about passive investing and explained. And I'm Aaron Fregnito with the Passive Cashflow Podcast hosted by People's Capital Group. If you don't know much about People's Capital Group, go to our website, peoplescapitalgroup.com, where you can learn more about passive investing in apartment buildings that we reposition and we help people invest in real estate. Okay, let's break into it today. So passive investing explained. He, here's the bottom line. Passive investing is the only way to build true wealth. See, wealth is created not by the hours you work. You can go to work. You can make a good income. You could build up your, your in your uh, corporation. You can work up the corporate ladder. You can get the better degree, get the higher paying job. And that's all great and dandy, better benefits, become the executive, the CEO. But at the end of the day, you're getting paid for your time. If you are getting paid for your time, if you're working a job, then you want to make sure you're taking that excess income and putting it into something that makes a true return on investment without you having to do anything. I don't mean answer calls from tenants or actively manage an investment through stock investments or some type of uh, investment online. I don't mean anything that takes any of your time except maybe opening a monthly update, depositing a quarterly check on the investment, and getting your, your tax return at the end of the year sent to you so you can send that to your CPA. But nothing more than that, just being aware of the investment, getting paid from the investment, depositing those checks, and just getting the tax forms as well. Uh, at the end of the year, that's what passive investing is. You shouldn't have to do any of that. You shouldn't have to do anything more than that. You shouldn't have to do any management or any controls of anything, really more than just looking at the updates and, and depositing your checks. And that's true passive wealth. And, and you can never achieve a true passive wealth by working more and more hours, getting a second job, getting a third job, getting another degree so you're, you're paid a higher wage. It's always good to improve your income, create a stronger income, work more hours. And, and of course, we want careers. We want skill sets, right? It's important to, to create some type of career path for yourself. Of course, of course it is, right? But we want to understand that if we're talking about retirement, we're talking about passive investing explained, getting more hours, working more jobs, getting a higher paying job isn't the way to passive wealth. It's going to help you have extra cash to invest. It's one of the things that, that's needed and necessary to get to true wealth, true passive wealth. But at the end of the day, understanding what passive wealth is, understanding the importance of it and saying, well, you know what? Equally as important as my degree or my benefits or my job is what am I doing with that money I'm earning? Am I putting it into passive investments that are creating true cash flow, growing in wealth over time? 
Are they smart investments? Are they safe investments? Are they things that are going to hold their value 10, 20 years down the road? Right? Am I diversified? Maybe I need, need to be in a few things, not just the stock market. Um, so that's understanding true passive wealth. That's aiming for true passive wealth. And if you're not keeping your eye on the prize, and I'm guilty of everyone's guilty of this. You want to buy your toys and enjoy your your cash and it's important to do that go on vacation but you really want to at least always be taking as they say 10 percent of your income putting it into passive wealth that's what all the gurus teach a lot of them i i i, I, I like to do more i suggest actually trying to put up to 25 to 33 percent of your income into assets that produce more income but that's not always possible depending on your income and your family and your expenses and your situation in life but if you can take 25 to 33 percent of your net take-home pay and put that into assets that are producing true passive wealth cash flow growing in value over time then you will achieve passive wealth over time and you will get there sooner than you think because it is possible, especially in America, with the ability to invest in so many different opportunities and different things out there. Real estate being one of them, of course. Okay, topic number two here. Working to earn money is necessary to get started. Of course, we always want to earn as much as we can in our career, do the best we can. We get up and go to work every day. But the goal should always be to have money coming in while you sleep. Right? That's a bit of a cheesy line, money coming in while you sleep. I've said that before, but it, it's a great way of explaining it, right? It's a great way of, sometimes when, wake, when I wake up in the morning, I, I think to myself, wow, I wonder if my real estate values went up today. And, you know, <laughs> as of the last eight years, the answer would be yes, right? And that's always good to see, just like I might check my uh, crypto portfolio or stock portfolio. You know, it's nice to see that go up as well. But the bottom line is if, if you're not getting some type of return from that investment and you're not diversified into the right areas and that wealth is continuing to grow in the right, right ways, then you might not sleep all that well. So you want to have your money coming in while you sleep, but you also want to have it in tried and true assets that produce tons of benefits and consistent income. So whatever you're doing to create that wealth, to create that, that initial income, um, it's so, so important that what it is in is also working hard, right? It, it can't just be maybe a bond that produces 2% or 3%. Sure, maybe a fraction of your portfolio should be there. But for the most part, over conservative investing is a detriment to getting to passive wealth as well, achieving true passive uh, wealth and true passive investing. If you're overly conservative in the investments you put them into and you don't diversify properly, don't take some calculated risks as well, like diversifying into real estate or diversifying out of the stock market, then you're also going to be uh, holding yourself back from creating a nice nest egg and creating true passive wealth. As they say, for most millionaires, they have seven forms of income. So ideally, you want to be diversified over up to seven different asset classes or seven different things that produce a check in your mailbox while you're sleeping, of course, figurative speech there. So our next topic here is each investment should be considered on multiple levels, right? So there's three very important things I always want to consider when investing, just to break it down and make it very simple. Of course, every investment's different. You always want to do your own due diligence. Of course, it's not tax advice, legal advice, or investment advice. This is my opinion. When I'm looking at an investment, I say, okay, well, what are the three most important things? So the first of all, um, the amount of time I need to put into the investment, right? Is it something that I need to manage? Something I need to focus on? I need to give my talent to? Uh, do I need to keep building it and keep maintaining it, managing it? Are the people operating the investment people that I need to worry about? If the answer is yes, then I'm not really interested in the investment. Are they people that I need to manage? And it's yes, and I'm not interested in the investment, not as in the passive side. Maybe if I'm in the position to buy a business, maybe that's the time in my career, I want to buy a business, I want to do something active, sure. Then I can look at that investment on that scale. But if it's a passive investment and 99% of, of your investment should be passive because you can't have a million active investments. You can't be the operator on everything. You just you can't be pulled that, that thin. You can't be everywhere at once. So do I need to put my time into this investment? Or is it truly, truly passive with good operators I can trust, I don't need to worry about, I can just enjoy their updates and checks in the mail as well. Secondly, what is the um, security? What is my money secured by? Is it backed by brick and mortar real estate? Is it, is it a 
Is it a cryptocurrency? That's more of a shot in the dark, right? But I have the potential to make high returns, right? So you have to understand the risk of the investment and you want to diversify there as well. Is it a stock that is backed by a company, but maybe way overvalued? I look at some of these stocks these days and I just don't understand multiple times earnings. You know, I mean, if, if we, people are worried about interest rates going up for real estate, well, look at the amount of debt that companies have. If interest rates go up, that's going to really affect the earnings of these companies that have taken out debt and used debt as a tool, maybe too aggressively over the last decade or so. It's been so affordable to borrow. So right now you want to look at the security of your investment. Is it secured by a good company? Is it secured by brick and mortar assets? Is it something that people need? Is it a commodity? Do people need a roof over their head, right? Do people need that? Yes, that's something they always need, right? So. That's the most important thing. What is your money secured by? Who's operating the money? What are the securities involved in the investment? And here's the third thing I look at in an investment. Return on investment. So this is third for a reason, right? Because the really when I look at an investment, uh, most any honest operator is going to give you kind of the not rosy picture. Kind of like the, hey, this is what happens if things don't really go according, don't keep going as rosy as they are. We run into challenges. And that ROI might not always be through the roof, amazing ROI, but it's a true, you know, honest, predictable, uh, projected ROI, their targeted ROI. Sometimes when you see ROIs that are way too high or way too impressive, and you know, these are targets, they're not guarantees, even if they say they're gonna be able to guarantee something, that's a four letter word with the SEC. So you gotta be careful. When I see really high return investments, they actually are a red flag for me. And I'm not that interested in investing in someone that's going to overpromise and underdeliver. I'd rather invest in someone or something that's going to be a secure, consistent investment. I don't have to worry about that makes money while I sleep, that I don't have to do anything to manage. And my money's safe and backed by true hard assets, good operators. That's where capital is best placed, in my opinion. And of course, you always want to diversify over a number of investments, the higher risk, the higher reward. But this is how I consider investments. Number one, you know, how much work does it need? Number two, the security of it. Number three, the ROI, right? Just a consistent ROI, 10% or greater is what, what we're always looking for. Okay, if my final point here on passive investing explained is time is everything, right? We wanna be patient with our capital. This kind of goes back to, you know, a more modest ROI as well. Let it build over time, right? The best in investments grow over time exponentially. So that's what I love about real estate. It's like it kind of starts slow. It's almost like planting a seed in the ground. It starts slow. It takes a little time to sprout, to do the renovations, to renegotiate leases, to figure out all our tenants and, and, and get the building working properly in that marketplace, Get you know work with all the inspectors and the process of that local town. And after that's done, it can take up to two years of some apartment buildings. We tend to really start to see true cash flow from the property, build that wealth, but that's just the beginning right? Then maybe let five years go by. We do that refinance. We get a nice large lump sum check from the refinance. And that allows us to get a tax-free tax advantage money, essentially that's that's not capital gains taxed because we're not selling the building. It's not cash flow. So we do these cash out refinances with our investors, but they need to be patient. It can be about a four-year process to get there. And then they can make it back half of their investment back. We'll build over time and do the refinance again around year eight, sell the building 1031 into a larger property down the road, maybe around year 15 after three refinances or so. But continue to use the asset in, in the best way possible. Harvest the growth of the asset without paying taxes on that money we're harvesting through the buy, renovate, refinance strategy. And of course, use the tax depreciation to write off the cash flow. So the whole strategy with the real estate investment is we're not paying taxes on our income. We're building our wealth exponentially while we're not putting the time in as long as it's a passive investment for our investors. And, and our investors are patient. And, and that's what good investments take. They take some patience. Right, that's why everyone's so skeptical of these cryptocurrencies because they're, <laughs> they're not really for patient people. They're for people looking to get rich quick. And that's a scary thing. And people are getting rich quick. And that's even scarier for <laughs> So, you know, you want to, of course, check those things out. But at the bottom end of the day, it's really incredible what real estate can do as it's well managed over time in high demand markets. We buy near train stations in North Jersey uh, cities. And I've just seen some properties I, I've bought around Rutgers University in Newark or areas of Patterson or um, just a different area, Plainfield. And we've really seen this wealth, you know, Union County, Essex County, Hudson, Passaic County, 
uh, in North Jersey, it just skyrocketed. Our rents are strong. Our property values are strong. Our, our buildings are well-maintained. We've developed a good management system. So this works all together to create true passive wealth for our investors and true passive income for them. And that's our job to keep building that day over day, time over time for them and give them updates and mail out the checks on a quarterly basis. So our investors are patient. They understand in good investments, take some patience, but over time they build wealth, uh, they become wealthier. And that is the goal here. And over time, they reinvest as new opportunities are available. They reinvest the capital from the refinance. About nine out of 10 of our investors reinvest. So that's important too, to reinvest that capital coming in. That's my final point here. The money you're making from those investments should be reinvested back into income producing assets. Now that's the hardest part of this whole business because you work hard to create passive income. You work hard to create the money to invest in that passive income. And now finally you're getting cash flow checks or finally you get that big lump sum for the refinance and you want to go to Disney World with your family. But the best thing to do is put that back into an income producing asset, back into a true passive investment. And that's how you're going to exponentially build that wealth over time. So self-control, patience, but also just extra exercising the right mindset here. It doesn't mean you have to live a life of poverty. Just make sure to allocate your assets properly, allocate your income to building those assets properly. That's something I really try to practice personally. And that's my suggestion here when trying to build true passive in income. This is Aaron Fregnito with Passive Investing Explained on the Passive Cash Flow Podcast. For more episodes, go to peoplescapitalgroup.com. You can check us out. We have a new episode almost every week, sometimes every other week. And we also often have guests on the podcast as well. We have over 60 episodes. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. We talked about Passive Investing Explained. I'm Aaron Fregnito with the Passive Cash Flow Podcast, co-owner of People's Capital Group. Have a great day.